So now we're in section two. So let's talk a little bit about that. On this one, we're going to discuss early Egyptian society, examine the social hierarchy of Egypt, analyze the building of pyramids. And so uh, the Old Kingdom was a period in Egyptian history that lasted from about 2700 to 2200 BC. It lasted about 500 years. During the Old Kingdom, the political system of Egypt was being developed. It was led by a pharaoh, which is seen as both a king and a god. And this is going to be something that Egypt's going to continue to do. They're going to look at their kings as god kings. Kings that the gods put in position to come to earth and rule over the earthly kingdom, uh, but they're actually gods. And so the, the pharaohs are going to be revered as being religious, not just political leaders in Egypt. Ancient Egyptians believed that Egypt was created for the gods and that the pharaoh came to earth to manage Egypt for the other gods, as I just said. Therefore, he had absolute control over everything in Egypt because he was a god. Being a god, the pharaoh was also held responsible when things happened, like if the crops didn't go well, wars broke out, and things like that. So uh, the pharaoh was considered held accountable for all this that happened because he was associated with it. The pharaoh hired government officials to help him, but most of them were usually family, friends, things like that. So you're going to hire, you have a lot of nepotism in ancient Egypt. And Khufu is the most famous pharaoh of the old kingdom. Khufu is going to be known for a number of things, such as uh, a boat that, and I believe there's a link for that in Google Classroom, where you can see about Khufu's boat. Um, he's also credited with establishing the old kingdom government. So you see, this is the social structure of ancient Egypt. You had the pharaoh on top, which was ruled, ruled as a god. Under him, you had the nobles, then the scribes and the craftspeople, and then under that was farmers, servants, and slaves, which were usually towards the bottom part of the social structure. Nobles were people from rich and powerful families. Egypt's lower class was about 80% of the population, and at the bottom of the hierarchy were slaves and servants, so we just looked at that. A pyramid, but the nobles are under Pharaoh, and then about 80% of the population were under the nobles and the Pharaoh. Although Egypt was well protected, it still had associations with other areas such as Mesopotamia, influencing Egyptian pottery. So they had connections with different people. They would trade with different groups of people. They would build these relationships. A lot of times they would you know, see a lot of what was going on in other places, religions and their government, and they would, they would influence their decisions. They engaged in trade with other areas. They traded with Syria, for example, providing wood to Egypt. Egypt didn't have a lot of wood being where it was located, so they would trade with Syria in order to get wood. Egypt was polytheistic. Each village worshipped their own gods, uh, so they would have multiple gods. Remember, the term polytheistic means many gods. This is where they're going to have a number of different gods they worship. And that's going to be, for the most part, the history of Egypt, other than when Akhenaten comes in, which we'll get into in a little bit later. The temples collected payments from the government and worshippers, and this would make the temples grow more influential. So the temples would collect money from the government and from people that are worshipped, and so it would give them power. Some of the gods were Anubis, God of the dead, Ra, the sun god, and Osiris, the god of the underworld. The, they believed in the afterlife or life after death. Uh, they believed the system stemmed and people uh, had a ka or a person's life force. We would call this something like a spirit or a soul or something inside of somebody today. It was a ka. To fulfill the needs of the ka, they would need to fill their tombs with, art, with objects for the afterlife, with possessions. A lot of times they would mummify their animals money, food, things like that to satisfy them on their journey to the afterlife. The Egyptians believed that the body had to be properly prepared for the afterlife, and this would lead to the Egyptian burial practices. Um, and I also believe there's a link in Google Classroom about a video about the creation of mummies. The Egyptians developed the method of embalming. They would create mummies, and a lot of times we think of mummies as being like, you know, in horror movies, oh, you know, chasing after people and stuff. Mummies are just basically bodies that are wrapped in cloth. It's it's a way of, of embalming the body. They 
they soaked the body in a in a liquid that would help preserve it from decaying. Then they would wrap it up in these cloths. They would take out the internal organs that would rot really quick so they wouldn't rot from the inside and things like that. So it was a very intricate process. Like I said, I believe there's a video linked on Google Classroom for this um, about how mummies were made and kind of give you a little bit better insight into that. Embalming in whole took several weeks. Um, it was usually the elite that would get embalmed, people of wealth and power. The peasants burying their dead uh, in shallow graves, but the elite would, have, would pay to have mummies made. So if you were rich, you could pay to have a mummy made. Now, it took a long time, and so that's why it cost so much. The peasants would bury their dead in shallow graves, and actually that turns into a form of mummification because a lot of bodies that have been found in the desert have been mummified because of the heat uh, and the you know, no shade and like that. It would basically cook the bodies into a state of mummification in the ground because it was shallow graves. Uh, pyramids uh, were also built during this time. That's another thing Khufu is known for is developing uh, a lot of uh, the pyramids. There were huge stone tombs with four triangle-shaped walls that met at a point on top. And these were spectacular built burial tombs. They were built as burial tombs. Um, they would be used to put dead bodies in, but also, you know, for example, the, the pyramids that would be used for the pharaohs would have a number of different chambers. It would have fake chambers to try and throw off grave diggers. Uh, it, you know, people that were trying to dig and steal things from the graves, be traps and things like that. Usually the pharaoh was buried on the internal part of it in a lower area. They'll be used specifically for the burial of the pharaoh. Despite this, most of the pyramids are going to be robbed at some point. The only one that we know of that wasn't really robbed was the pyramid or was the uh, tomb of King Tutankhamun or King Tut. That's what makes him so significant as we get into that a little bit later on was that his tomb was was not bothered. And so we got to see it when it was first found the way they would have left it. And so the Great Pyramid of Khufu was built during the Old Kingdom as many of the, of the largest pyramids were. This is a, a picture of that. And you can just see you know, the, the work that went into building something like that. Engineering, uh, the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes is engineering. We still have that today, of course. You know, you have engineers that they, they take the scientific knowledge for a practical purpose of building something, usually building structures, uh, you know, bridges, whatever. The size of the pyramid would show the greatness of the pharaoh that had built it. Um, basically, they started coming to a competition to say, okay, you know, and, and they wouldn't, you know, they were the ones before them was dead, but they would say, I want a bigger temple than what this pharaoh has. I want a bigger pyramid than this pharaoh. And so they would start it really from the time they became pharaoh working on their temple tomb. The idea of making the pharaoh's spirit happy is one way to get it to the afterlife. So that brings us to the end of section two. The idea was whoever had a bigger tomb was more impressive. Therefore, they had a better regime. They had a better control. They had a better rule. And so it was seen as being, you make a better pyramid, you were a better pharaoh. And that's the general idea. So that brings us to the end of section two. So now we're going to get into section three.